Turn with me, if you would, to Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis 1, we find these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. This is the beginning of the biblical narrative. And we need to notice a number of things. First of all, in Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This is the moment at which God creates the raw material from which he is going to make creation. Before this moment, God imagined what he was going to make. He was going to make this universe in all of its grandeur. But it didn't just stay in his mind. It was not simply his imagination. But he willed what he imagined into existence. And we see this in Genesis 1.1. The beginning was the formation of the raw material that he as the first artist would begin to manipulate to bring about what he had imagined. And in verse 2 it says, Now the earth was formless and empty. It doesn't say it was deformed, but it was without form, and it was empty. And the next thing, darkness, was over the surface of the deep. So what he made at first was the raw material, and it was without form, it was void, and there was darkness. And then it says the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So the earth was unformed. It's like the sculptor who has a ball of clay. And he, he needs something to work with. It's the painter with the blank canvas. You have the raw material, but everything else is still in your mind. So what does God do? He begins to form, and there's an initial form. The beginning is to take and form inanimate things. The sun, the moon, the stars. Genesis 3 says, let there be light, and there was light. Genesis 1, 6 says, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. Verse 9, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. So there is a forming of what was unformed, and there was light where before there was only darkness. So God is shaping the raw materials and he makes inanimate things first. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Then he makes animated things. Plants in Genesis 1, 2 through, 12 through 13. Animals in Genesis 1, 20 through 25. And finally, he makes the imago Dei. He makes us in his image in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. So God adds form to the unformed. And at each stage of his adding form, there is a higher order, a more refined order. And so we see in verse 11, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which in their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. So he creates plants, 
but he created in the plant the seed. And the seed is the thing that allows the plant to multiply. There is a wonderful African proverb that says you can count the seeds in a mango. How many seeds in a mango? There's one seed in the mango. But you can't count the mangoes in the seed. How many mangoes in that one seed? Without number. Because the concept of the seed itself is the concept of multiplying, of reproducing in kind. So even on the level of plants, there is the ability in the seed, the concept of the seed principle, to replicate to another generation and another generation. But then he went from creating plants to creating animals. Now we have a higher form. Now we have the breath of life. And so you see in verse 20, And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kind. So he creates living creatures. But he is not finished yet. Now we come to the high point of his creation. He's creating in his image. Now when you think of what we are taught in school, we are taught in school about Darwin and evolutionism, evolution as an ideology, and we are made from apes, from chimpanzees. No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible is very clear. When God made human beings, he looked at himself. We're not patterned after animals. Our pattern is based on the very nature of God himself. And we see this in Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created men in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. This is not a man's world. This is God's world. And to fulfill his image, it took male and female. Two men cannot reveal all that it means to be made in the image of God. A single man cannot reveal all that it means to be made in the image of God. What does it take to reveal all that it means to be made in the image of God? It takes male and female. This is chapter one. And at the end of each part of God's creative activity, like an artist, he stands back and he looks at what he has just made. And six times he reflects, it is good. And that word good means goodness or precious or beautiful. What he has made is beautiful at each stage. And then he also uses this expression, it is so. And that means it is right, it is correct. What he's doing as the artist is saying, what I have put on the canvas, what I have formed out of the clay is what I intended to make. 
It is good. It is precious. It is beautiful. It is correct. And then in verse 31, after he's made male and female, he looks and he says, it is exceedingly good. So that's Genesis 1. Now we go to Genesis 2, and we see the unpacking of his creation of the Imago Dei, the image of God. And in Genesis 2, 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. Now we have men. Part of what it means, the, um, the image of God. But he's not finished yet. He's not finished yet. At each stage of his forming, he adds more detail. He creates a little higher form. And we see in verse 21, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. My sisters, you are the crescendo of creation. My brothers, you are near the final, but you are not the final. You are not the final form. There is one final thing that God is going to make after he made male. He made female. And the female is the crescendo of creation, the high watermark of God's creative activity. And we need to recognize this and celebrate this. And our world tends to ignore this. The world tends to, as we've said in other places, we see women as inferior to men. No, women are not inferior to men. In fact, women were the high point of God's creative activity. We see people looking for a strategy looking for projects, looking for funding, and different things that we can ex ex stand against, like human traffic or different things, you know, because it's cruel. And, and, and for me, like the revelation that I'm getting here is like, yeah, that's good. But what we really need is a movement of people, you know, that can help others to understand, you know, uh, God's perspective, maternal heart, for women, you know, what is this? How we can understand that is a movement of mind change. It's like a moral reform. Here is the crown of creation. Man is the crown of creation, but woman is the crown of the crown. Here in human form from the hand of the creator himself is a manifestation, the manifestation of the maternal heart of God. Women manifest into this world the maternal heart of God. Here is the mother of all living. The name Eve. What does the name Eve mean? Life giver. Life giver. Who gives life? 
God gives life. Who else gives life? The woman gives life. Here is the mother of all living, the wife of the first man. And here is the prequel to none other than the bride of Christ. At the end of history, Christ is coming back to get married. The Bible begins with a wedding and it ends with a wedding. And it begins with a beautiful woman, Eve. And it ends with a beautiful woman, the church, the bride of Christ. And Eve, the first woman, is the prequel. She is the vision of something that will come even more glorious at the end of history. The very bride of Christ, the one who is worthy of God himself. There's a book I read years ago called The Divine Romance by Gene Edwards. And I'd like to read a passage from this book now because it's talking about the moment of the creation of Eve. Slowly the revelation subsided, giving angels a moment to wonder what ultimate thought had coursed through his being, what masterpiece might now fall from his hand. At last they could pierce the light and see again the face of God. Upon that face was etched exaltation and joy whispered one angel as he staggered to his appointed place. He has contemplated man's counterpart and seen her in the eye of his mind. But somewhere beyond that sight, methinks he has glimpsed a higher, far greater revelation. But what? Tis mystery, hidden in unapproachable light, rejoined another. Now it was with trembling hands that the builder did build and mold and fashion and mold again. And while the being he fashioned took on its final form, Odd and dumbfounded angels fell once more to their knees at the wonder of the sight before them. One angel most irreverently cried aloud the thoughts of all, He is not making another ish. This one is alike, but different. As the lioness is to the lion, so this out of man... But never, never, cried the wayward angel, was lion or lioness so beautiful as this. Another angelic being broke the confines of restraint, his exclamation foretelling the advent of thunderous peals of praise which would follow his words. Nor was ever man so beautiful as this, he explained. With that, the vaults of heaven broke open, and in one full-throated shout, all heavenly beings proclaimed, never was, nor e'er shall be a being as beautiful as she. All hosts in heaven's courts, all creatures on earth's earthen sod, It matters not the tribe nor race. One side alone can be more beautiful than she. That is the face of God. 
my sisters. You are the crescendo of creation. Nothing more radiant than you but the face of God.